Believe it or not, the $5 billion Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, which is bound to be one of the world's 20 largest hydroelectric power plants, could trigger a regional war because it can be used as a weapon to destroy both Egypt and Sudan from thirst and drought or flooding. While the dam itself is an engineering marvel and quite amazing, it also has been plagued with problems due to corruption issues and alleged construction shortcuts that, as some say, made it rather weak and eligible for collapse. Why did Ethiopia build GERD and how is it bound to solve its electricity problems? Why is it a huge headache and a possible existential threat to Egypt and Sudan that could lead to a major regional war? And finally, what are the engineering methods used to make this colossal beast a reality? From 1961 to 1985, Ethiopia experienced a horrific on and off famine that led to the death of about 1.5 million people and displaced more than 7 million. This sounds rather bizarre to many because Ethiopia is the source of the Blue Nile. The famine was rather a result of the country's military policies in dealing with all and any insurgencies or opposition. They simply weaponized water and farmland, which was quite horrific. However, Ethiopia has come a long way since then. But as it progressed, it found itself in a difficult position because it is an electricity poor state with a good percentage of its population disconnected from the power grid. The only feasible solution was to produce electricity via its most abundant resource, which is the Blue Nile River. As a result, the country decided to build GERD. In 2010, the design of the dam was finalized and construction began in 2011. It is located in the Benishangul Gamuz region of Ethiopia, about 40 kilometers east of the border with South Sudan. Once completed, the dam will produce a total of 5.5 gigawatts. The dam will also be the largest hydroelectric power plant in Africa and among the 20 largest in the world. As a result, Ethiopia will become rich in electricity and even able to export it. Additionally, the dam is predicted to help it speed its way out of poverty. But the dam is also a huge problem for its neighbors, Sudan and Egypt, and could even lead to a regional war. But how? The Nile is not just a river, it is the cradle of life for 11 countries. Its tributaries are endless, and to this day scientists continue to find water sources that feed into both the Blue Nile and White Nile rivers, which meet in the capital of Sudan, Khartoum, where it simply becomes the Nile. The White Nile originates in Lake Victoria, which is shared between Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. Then it moves northbound through Uganda, South Sudan, the Republic of Sudan, and finally Egypt, where it empties in the Mediterranean Sea. As for the Blue Nile, it originates at Lake Tana in Ethiopia and flows to Sudan, where it converges with the White Nile in Khartoum. Other countries that rely on the Nile River as their main water source are the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, Rwanda, and Eritrea. However, since the Nile's top tributary is the Blue Nile, on which the new dam is located, it can cause the water levels in Egypt to dramatically decrease, especially during droughts. So since Egypt depends on the Nile for about 97% of its irrigation and drinking water, it has demanded that Ethiopia sign a binding agreement to protect its water rights. At some point, the debate was so heated, some Egyptian political leaders made it clear that all options are on the table, including sabotage. However, Egypt has not been hostile towards Ethiopia, and they are still talking. Sudan is less concerned about the dam, as it is convinced that Ethiopia will not allow the dam to become a source of thirst for countries down the stream. However, negotiations stalled in 2019, and now the dam is almost complete, with a reservoir water level of 605 meters. Right now, many expect the three countries to sort out their differences in the next few months or years, all depending on Ethiopia's behavior during droughts and after the dam is 100% complete and the reservoirs filled to 100% capacity. If Ethiopia shut off the tap or refused to increase the flow during drought, Egypt is likely to invade the area around the dam and occupy it as it drains a high percentage of the reservoirs before bombing or demolishing it unless a binding agreement is reached. 
Needless to say, the situation is still scary around the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. For now, we can hope that all parties will reach a final agreement and call it a day. Let's now take a look at the construction and engineering used in this colossal dam. The main contractor building the dam is the Italian company WeBuild. Nearly 10 million cubic meters of concrete have been used to build it. The Italian firm Tratos Cavi SPA supplied low and high voltage cable for the dam. GERD is actually not one, but two dams. The main dam is 40 kilometers from the border with Sudan, while the second saddle dam is about 3.5 kilometers from the border with Sudan. The main gravity dam is located in an area about 500 meters above sea level. The dam itself is 170 meters tall, 1800 meters long, and composed of roller compacted concrete. The crest of the dam will be at a height of 655 meters above sea level. The outlets of the two powerhouses are below the ground level. The structural volume of the dam will be 10,200,000 cubic meters. The second dam is about 36 kilometers downstream. It acts as a support for the reservoir and is a curved 4.9 kilometers long and 50 meters high rock fill saddle dam. It is located approximately 600 meters above sea level, and its surface has a bituminous finish to keep the interior of the dam dry. This makes the areas of the reservoir behind both dams combined quite massive at a capacity of 74 cubic kilometers with a surface area of 1,874 square kilometers. The main dam features two spillways. The main and gated spillway is located to the left of the main dam and will be controlled by six floodgates. An ungated spillway, the auxiliary spillway, sits at the center of the main dam. The dam crest is 15 meters high to the left and to the right of the ungated spillway. This ungated spillway is only expected to be used if the reservoir is full and the flow exceeds 14,700 cubic meters per second. A third emergency spillway is located to the right of the curved saddle dam and is designed to carry water only if the conditions for a flood reach more than 30,000 cubic meters per second. Flanking on either side of the auxiliary ungated spillway at the center of the dam are two powerhouses that are equipped with two 375 megawatt Francis turbine generators and 11 400 megawatt turbines, all provided by Alstom, which is owned by General Electric. The total installed capacity with all turbine generators is 5.15 gigawatts. The Francis turbines inside the powerhouses are installed vertically, raising 7 meters above the ground level. A switch station has been constructed close to the main dam where the generated power will be delivered to the main power grid. The dam is almost complete and so far it has not caused much trouble for Egypt and Sudan. However, Ethiopia refuses to sign a deal that guarantees Egypt in particular that if a drought hits the region during the filling period, it will release enough water from the reservoir to help mitigate the drought effects. Well, we can only hope that droughts do not take place in the next few years while the GERD reservoir is being filled because if Egypt faced a serious crisis, an armed conflict will ensue. Do you think a deal will be signed and the dam will only be dedicated to the greater good of the region even during droughts or will it become a source of conflict? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you.